Hello everyone, it's John from Double Sleeved here and welcome to a new series of videos called Brawl on a Budget where I take you through some brawl decks that are very low cost specifically today under £10 Why Brawl? Because we've all got standard cards, we love playing standard maybe we want to experiment with a multiplayer format and Commander can be quite scary in terms of having to amass a, a load of cards from throughout Magic's history Brawl gives us an opportunity to play with standard cards in a completely different fashion and potentially use some of those standard cards that you weren't using for standard. Um, the idea of Brawl um, budget is that this is going to be incredibly wallet friendly. Um, you guys will be able to pick this deck up from doublesleeve.co.uk for under £10, including the Brawler, um, not including lands, but if you don't have a bunch of lands lying around then you probably need to get a load anyway um, but it means you can just open a bunch of packs and pull together something fantastic now today's specifically today's brawl is all about Ephemia the cacophony and why well because a fantastic subscriber Jack Nelson suggested loves harpies and who doesn't like a bit of zombie synergy so uh, so here we go for you Jack we're all about this Ephemia the Cacophony Brawl budget deck. It is not pauper. Um, it would have been incredibly difficult to get a all common uh, Brawl deck done. However, um, this is still incredibly low budget. So um, by and large, I'm not going to share prices. There's only a couple of cards that are worth more than like 40p. Um, so uh, so you just have to bear with me on that one. But we'll go through some of the, the strategies I've got a little bit of a script here, but by and large, we're just going to wing it and um, and uh, haha, harpy wings um, and see uh, and see how we get on. So, um, first of all, we have got Aphemia herself. Um, she's a two-one legendary enchantment harpy for one and a black straight away low CMC, which is going to help us get her out early. Um, flying always useful and at the beginning of your end step you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard if you do create a 2-1 two, 2-2 two, two, sorry black zombie creature token um, which is going to form part of our strategy state for sure we're going to be getting zombos and we're going to get them out and we're going to be doing a lot with it and in order to do so we're going to need enchantments so the backbone of this deck our enchantments. Obviously, Ephemia herself is an enchantment, but we won't be sacrificing her to the graveyard at any point. Um, we will purely because we need her in order to trigger her. Um, but we're going to go through a bunch of low cost enchantments. Now, because she is our brawler, we are stuck with mono black, but that's fine. There are still a few decent mono black enchantments, and we'll go through a bunch of them now and why we would put them in our brawl deck. So, Hateful Eidolon, one mana nice and quick um, enchantment creature is a one two with lifelink and whenever an enchanted creature dies draw a card for each aura you controlled that was attached to it and um, potential to draw quite a few cards if you keep hateful idol on the battlefield but if needs be um, then this spirit can go into the graveyard and we can be exiling it for a two two getting ourselves some value Next, we have Font of Agonies, which is an enchantment that whenever you pay life, um, put that many blood counters on Font of Agonies, and for one and a black, remove four blood counters and destroy a target creature. It's a one mana, again, um, that we could, if we just get it in the graveyard, we could sacrifice or ex exile and get ourselves a 2-2 zombie out. Um, but equally, whenever we pay life, if we're going to be paying life at any point, this potentially gives us um, an opportunity to destroy a creature. Next, we've got Omen of the Dead, another one mana enchantment with flash, which is always useful. Um, when it enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So again, in this, um, we'll be getting rid of quite a few creatures. Um, we're going to want to be quite aggressive in some ways. Um, so uh, so it definitely helps us get creatures out again um, if we've had to sack a creature early on. Um, and then for two and a black, sacrifice Omen of the Dead and scry two. Again, it's getting itself into the graveyard, which is helpful for us later on when we're going to need to exile it in order to get ourselves 2-2 zombie. 
Dead Weight, good card. Um, I believe it's been reprinted in Ikoria recently. Another one mana enchantment, and it's an aura, which again works with Hateful Eidolon. Um, enchant creature, but chances are you're going to be using this one to get rid of an, uh, an enemy creature um, because it gives minus two, minus two. So you whack this onto uh, your opponent's creature, and it if it's got a toughness of two, obviously, you'll be getting rid of it. And then that goes into your graveyard, ready to exile and get ourselves a zombie. Mogus' favour. This is a lot of one mana enchantments in black. Um, another aura. This one's useful in terms of being able to uh, plus and minus. So you're plusing for power gain and you're minusing for um, the opposition. If they've got a one toughness, you're going to be getting rid of it. Or maybe you've... Um, You've done some damage to it, and this is a good opportunity to finish it off. Um, it also escapes for two and a black, so you then exile two cards from your graveyard, maybe ones that aren't enchantments that you need a Femia for. Maybe you filled your graveyard with enchantments early on, and you can afford to bring this back, um, but can be really useful in terms of buffing one of your creatures, or with Hateful Idol on, if this is on one of your own creatures. Dead good. Myers Grasp, a bit more uh, increased version of Dead Weight. Um, for two mana, again, another enchantment that's going to be spot removing um, for two, which is uh, dead dead quick and good. Um, so we like Maya's Grasp. Kaya's Ghost Form, which I think is useful. Um, when an enchantment dies or is put into exile, return the card to the battlefield under your control. So um, if you are uh, whacking this on one of your own creatures... With Hateful Idol on, again, it works well. It could go straight onto Ephemia, potentially, if you want to keep her around and not have to keep paying um, the increased cost to cast her. Um, again, pretty good. Um, Minions Return. Uh, the two a one, a two and a, and a black flash enchantment. Enchanted Creature, when Enchanted Creature dies, return a, the card to the battlefield under your control. So this guy, very useful in terms of either keeping hold of something you've got or you immediately get whatever that creature is under your control, which could be useful if you're playing someone with very powerful creatures or with some decent effects. Um, but, you know, that that kind of uh, effect, being an enchantment as well, which works with Ephemia. Yeah, we love it. Unholy Indenture, two and a black. When a creature dies, you turn it to the battlefield under your control with a 1-1 counter on it. There's quite a bit of this. As I said, we're going to be sacrificing as part of our um, some of our effects later on. Um, we're going to be wanting to fill our graveyard. We're going to be wanting to bring things back. We're going to want to make the most of the number of creatures that we do have. Um, and so something like this is dead good. And again, with Hateful Eidolon, can bring us some card draw. Um, and then we get on to um, some of the synergy you'll see a little bit later on. Uh, at the beginning of your upkeep, um, you lose one life and you amass one. So you, it's a two, uh, so it's a two mana, one and a black dreadhold invasion. Um, so we've paid life, which potentially helps us with um, with ch -ch -ch -ch. you know which one it is with with the previous card um, and uh, quickly nip back and have a look which one I'm, which one I'm talking about. So you all are on the same wavelength with me. Font of Agonies. There you go. Font of Agonies. Um, so you're using Font of Agonies um, ability when you're paying life. Mm -mm 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 -mm. A little bit rusty. This is the first time we, you know, we're playing around with this uh, this format. Um, and you're amassing one. So you're gaining that zombie, um, which again will be useful with Synergy. You're losing life, which potentially helps the Font of Agonies. Um, and um, it's an enchantment that if it is removed or is in your graveyard, is very going to be very useful for you to get rid of, to get another zombie. And it has the extra, whenever a zombie token you control with power 6 or greater attacks, it gains lifelink until the end of turn. So if you can protect this um, and you can amass a large enough army, um, then we're going to get a lot of benefit out of Dreadhold Invasion. So now we've got an enchantment creature. Which is Soul Reaper of Mogus or Mogus is a 2 3 Minotaur Shaman or Shaman, 2 and a black, which for 2 and a black you can sacrifice a creature and draw a card. So we said about sacrificing creatures, this helps us with a bit of card draw. It's an enchantment creature itself, um, not the most powerful at 2 3, but again, it's all about its abilities. It's all about the fact that getting a sack outlet gets things into the graveyard um, and it's drawing cards, which is useful for us. Inevitable End, 
um, which is a, a funny little card. Um, either you play it on yourself and you gain some sort of benefit out of it, or more than likely, um, for two and a black, um, you enchant a creature, and that creature has, at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature. Um, so you either sacrifice the creature this is on, so if it's uh, on maybe their, their brawler or their commander, shall I say, um, or it's on one of their big creatures that just got out, they're either having to sacrifice things around it or they're going to have to get rid of it in order to get rid of this inevitable end. It's a bit annoying, and there's a little bit of an annoyance theme going through this deck as harpies are known to be pretty annoying themselves. Treacherous Blessing for two and a black, and enchantment again. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Whenever you cast a spell, you lose one life. So again, with Font of Agonies, um, a good little bit of synergy. When Treacherous Blessing becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. So this one, if the for us, we're going to want to either target this, if we can, um, to get rid of it, or we're just going to have it sat there and losing life. Um, we've drawn some cards off of it. Um, so, uh, yeah, so definitely... Uh, useful for card draw which is what we want this for or late game potentially we don't want to draw cards um, or maybe even early game we don't want to use the mana for that um, and it gets an enchantment into the graveyard for us Tyramet calls the dead um, for two and a black don't know why I don't know why I kind of sung that um, so you're adding law counters if you don't know how sagas work each turn so you play it and you get that the one which is uh, one and two are both the same put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard fueling the graveyard when you uh, then you may exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard if you do create a 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token so what's useful like this one is you can exile a creature that might not be uh, an enchantment or you can exile an enchantment and you're getting a 2-2 two, two zombie out so you're kind of doubling up on a femia's benefit for two turns on the third go um, you gain x life and scry x where x is the number of zombies you control that this card can be really really useful in terms of the synergy with the femia if you can keep a lot of zombies on on the uh, on the field um, and then once you've done that third go uh, this goes into graveyard and then you've got that uh, fuel for a femia later on underworld dreams for three black uh, enchantment whenever an opponent draws a card it deals one damage to that player annoying again an annoying card um that in a four player game you're dealing damage to each player when they're drawing their first card and in some decks lots of card draws happening um so very annoying and it's an enchantment if they get rid of it you're getting a 2-2 zombie out of it later on and then obviously we need more harpies we can't just have a mono harpy deck mind rack harpy a 3-2 harpy for three and a black an enchantment as well with flying at the beginning of combat on your turn each player puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard and um, so again you're fueling the graveyard which is what is going to be pretty important in terms of some of the cards we've got um, and each player is doing it which is going to really irritate some people that have potentially lined up their top cards um, or who don't really want to get rid of cards um, one that people are going to want to get rid of it's flying as well for three uh, which is alright, so yeah, a good little card for us, and an enchantment if it does go into the graveyard. Nyxborn Marauder, purely a slightly larger enchantment creature, for 4-3, uh, Minotaur for 2, black, black. Um, one that potentially is just fodder for a 2-2, two, two. Um, but later on, for 4 mana, yeah, it's pretty useful in terms of getting it out for be a 4-3. Aspect of Lamfrey. Lam Lamprey, sorry. For three and a black. An enchantment aura. Enchant creatures you control. When aspect of Lamprey enters the battlefield, target opponent discards two cards. Enchanted creature has lifelink. So it's coming down. It's giving one of your creatures lifelink. Um, and your, op your opponent is discarding two cards. An annoying card. And there's a bit of discarding cards going on. Um, disruption. Certainly, if they've played a bunch of cards and they've only got a couple in their hand, or you know what they've just what they've got, um, useful. And uh, yet again, it's an enchantment and it's an aura. Working with some of the other cards we've had. Ill-gotten inheritance. So for three and a black, another enchantment at the beginning of your upkeep. Ill-gotten inheritance deals one damage to each opponent, and you gain one life. So this is straight away 
um, in your upkeep, pinging people, and you're gaining a bit of life that potentially you lost from some of the other cards. For five and a black, you sacrifice this, which puts it in the graveyard for you. It deals four damage to target opponent, and you gain four life. So again, a little bit of damage for people, a little bit of life gain for you, gets into the graveyard. More importantly, though, this is just going to stick around as, as long as you can. Revenge of Ravens, another really frustrating card. You can see there's a bit of a, a frustration here. Whenever a creature attacks you or a planeswalker, planeswalker you control, that creature's controller loses one life and you gain one life. So this is a bit of don't attack me, attack other people. Um, you're gaining a bit of life. They're losing a bit of life. Uh, you can see that kind of life loss, life gain combination, um, which, again, an enchantment that we can use if they get rid of it um, to get ourselves a 2-2. Two -two. Gravebreaker Lamia. Uh, another decent sized creature and again enchantment creature a 4-4 four, four, um, snake lamia uh, for four and a black another lifelink when grave break lamia enters the battlefield search your library for a card put it into the graveyard then shuffle your library so you see already we've had some of those um, bring bring back or um, pull out of the graveyard um, spells you cast from a graveyard cost one less um, so potentially this is helping either if we've got no enchantments in our graveyard this puts one in there for us to get a 2-2 out of or it helps fuel the graveyard in order to later on bring something out um, Vizier of the Scorpion um, is going to start us off so we've finished with the with the enchantments just trying to get my bearings we've finished with the enchantments we're now on to a bit of synergy with zombies so uh, it's a 1-1 one, one for 2 and a black a zombie itself, when Vizier of the Scorpion enters the battlefield, amass one. Zombie tokens you control have death touch. So we've amassed one when it enters. So potentially if we want to attach an aura to this, that is when it when it dies, it comes back onto the battlefield, then A, you're getting that death touch back on your zombies and you're amassing another one. Can be useful for that from that perspective. Um, it gives itself death touch, obviously. Um, a good little card, um, not an enchantment, but helpful in terms of the synergy of the zombies. Um, and another one, which I don't think can be dismissed in terms of a little bit of uh, of, of, ma of ramp with the mana rock, um, but more importantly, creatures you control. So this is a, a heraldic banner for three. It's an artifact. As heraldic banner enters the battlefield, choose a color, black in this deck. Creatures you control of that chosen color get plus one zero. So all your zombies then are a 3-2 um, that you create through Ephemia. Obviously, if they're um, an amassed zombie army, then they are uh, just plus one to whatever they are. Um, and then add, you can tap this to add one color, um, or one mana, sorry, of a chosen color. So useful to get a bit of mana later on, um, but mainly you're doing this to get that plus one onto all these zombies that you're going to be creating. Ritual of Soot, two... Uh, Black, black, destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less. So we're on to, there's a few board wipes just in case. This is a bit of a, a lower um, earlier on or just get rid of something that's cheap. Um, it will destroy uh, lots of this of your army. So this is kind of a catch up quick card. Um, useful for token armies, etc. cetera, um, if we're not maybe in the lead where we need to be. Um, again, you can attach auras to things that come back on your side, etc., etc., and then destroy stuff. Useful way of, of say, getting back on track. Um, spot removal, spark harvest for one black. As an additional cost to this, sacrifice a creature or pay three and a black. Chance are you're going to be sacrificing a creature with one of the auras on it or just put it into the graveyard. Then you destroy a target creature or planeswalker. So again, chances are the... Um, Opponents are going to be having a slightly better um, set of creatures than we are. Um, bigger, stronger, if they're going green or something similar, um, then this is useful. Or to get rid of their commander. Sanitarium Skeleton. Somewhat of an important card in this deck. Uh, it's uh, one mana for a 1-2. And it says for two and a black, return San Sanitarium Skeleton from your graveyard to your hand. This card will help us in terms of all the sacrificing that we've been seeing um, to give us that creature on the board. Um, it's not a zombie, which is a real shame, but it is definitely a useful card in terms of the amount that we are going to be sacrificing. Drillbit. 
continuing the theme of annoyance, for two and a black, it's a sorcery, but you can pay its spectacle cost if um, an opponent has lost life, and we've got quite a bit of life loss um, enchantments, and obviously we could attack with some of our creatures. Target player reveals their hand, you choose a non-land card from it, that player discards that card. So if somebody's clearly ahead, if somebody's drawn a card they really need, if somebody's had to put something back into their hand, whatever it may be, this card can really irritate. For one mana, um, yeah, absolutely. This is the sort of thing that is just slowing people down. Now, the other thing with Brawl, which I haven't really touched on, um, and I'm assuming that you're aware, um, is that you you can play one-on-one, -on -one, in which case some of these cards are absolutely um, incredible in terms of being able to just focus on your, your one opponent. Um, you would probably change the deck around a little bit if you're playing one-on-one -on -one versus multiplayer, but this is kind of a hybrid, um, so you can pick it up, and like I said, for a budget price. Severed Strands as an additional cost. Oh, it's a two and a, two and a uh, sorry, it's a one and a black two mana um, sorcery as an additional cost to cast this spell. Sacrifice a creature again. Sacrificing creatures, you gain life equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. Destroy target creature and opponent controls. So this one's a little bit more than um, the uh, the other sacrifice cards we've got. Um, you get to destroy a target creature, and you gain a bit of life all for sacrificing a creature and paying two mana. So, um, a pretty good card in my books. Dread Presence. Generically just a decent card. Um, it's a 3-3 three, three Nightmare for three and a black. We play mono black, and we're only playing swamps as, as a land. So, whenever a swamp enters a battlefield under your control, choose one. What's useful about this, straight away, is that Later on in the game, when swamps potentially aren't what you want to be drawing, this gives you some value off of them. Um, so when you play a swamp, you draw a card, and you lose a life. Good for for A, card draw, B, potentially fueling Font of Agonies. Dread Presence deals two damage to any creature, and you gain two life. So you could potentially spot removal, or um, you're, you're targeting an opponent, maybe, potentially. Um, and then you're gaining two life because potentially we need a bit of life gain. Um, not so much of an issue in multiplayer formats, but we have got a few things that are losing us some life. Um, generically, just a decent card and something that, you you know, if you've got a handful of lands, um, can really benefit you turn on turn. Cauldron's Gift, four and a black, a sorcery. Um, oh, for its adamant cost, which we will always be playing it for, if, you ha if at least three black mana are spent, Put the top four cards of your library into your graveyard. Again, useful for getting things we need into the graveyard. You may choose a creature card from your graveyard. If you do, return it to the battlefield with an additional plus one, plus one counter on it. So you've put four things into the graveyard, potentially one of those we want on the battlefield. You may choose a creature card that we've potentially just put into the into the graveyard from the graveyard and return it with a plus one, plus one. So there's quite a bit with either the... And, Things like the end of the battlefield effects or just decent cards that we want to be having out. Um, dead useful and very frustrating for the opponent. Wand of Vertebrae helping to fuel the graveyard for one mana, an artifact that says tap, put the top card of your library into your graveyard. Or for two and tap and exile the Wand of um, Vertebrae, shuffle up to five target cards from your graveyard into your library. So this does is fueling your graveyard with enchantments that we potentially want to put in there. And if we just so happen to um, put something we need back into the library, we can always put it back into the library rather than having it in the graveyard. But chances are we're going to want to just keep fueling the graveyard with this guy. Barrier of Bones. Simple card. It's a, a, a zero three 3 skeleton wall for one black with Defender. But when Barrier of Bones enters the battlefield, surveil one. So for one mana, we're getting a, a, a three toughness blocker. And we're getting to put a card into the graveyard. If this is early on in our hand, um, useful for a little bit of protection, and it's putting something potentially an enchantment, so that potentially turn two, we're able to play Ephemia and get the benefit off of her straight away. Mephitic Vapors, two and a black for a sorcery. All creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn. Surveil two. So, what's good about this is we're surveilling two, so we're getting something into the graveyard. And all creatures get minus one, minus one. Most of our creatures are going to be zombies that are two twos. And therefore, we're going to be, or something with higher than one toughness, this is going to be really hitting any token decks. Or, potentially, 
anyone who's got a lot of two toughness creatures that we're going to want to uh, to lower down so that we can smash all over them or three toughness smash all over them with zombies um, situational it may or may not benefit you but even just with a surveil it can be dead useful price of fame for three and a black is an instant this spell costs two less if you cast if to, uh, to cast it if it targets a legendary creature which it would be potentially their commander destroy target creature surveil too so you're just getting rid of their tar their commander and then you're putting two things into the graveyard again graveyard fuel really useful Maya triton a 2-1 zombie merfolk so it's helping with the zombie synergies in terms of getting buffed potentially for one and a black it has death touch already when Maya Triton enters the battlefield, put the top two cards of your library into your graveyard and you gain two life. So you're fueling the graveyard, you're gaining a bit of life, you're putting a zombie on the field, all for two mana. Um, good little extra card for us to have. And then the last couple of cards we have are more of our game winners, more of our big synergy cards. So Comrade the Grim, three black black. This is the kind of card that you're going to want to attach an aura to, you want to want to bring him back out again. Um, you're going to want to... Um, keep an eye on um, and find him fairly early on so it's a 5-4 human knight for like I said 3 black black whenever another creature dies or a creature card is put into the graveyard from anywhere other than the battlefield or a creature card leaves your graveyard so comrade the grim deals 1 damage to each opponent for 1 black each player puts the top card of their library into the graveyard so we've already looked at fueling the graveyard if this guy is on the battlefield, which you're going to want to find him fairly early on, you're going to want to get him into your graveyard and bring him back out again, or you're going to want to get him played. So a little bit of ramp needed. Um, obviously, you're not going to be able to get him out unless you cheat him out um, until turn five or four if you've got Heraldic Banner out. Um, but as soon as you can get him out, protect him, put some auras on him, and then you are your creatures are going into the graveyard creatures are dying you're removing loads of benefit potentially helps you with the um destroy things with cmc uh three or less the minus one minus ones whatever it may be this card is dealing one damage to each opponent you just need to destroy um basically just need to board wipe um anything that's smaller than sir comrade and you've won the game um, so a really big card for the deck and one of the two main cards that are going to win it for you when it gets really tough and the last one being finale of eternity which is an x black black sorcery with the most expensive card in the deck um one pound 15 so still not particularly expensive um destroy up to three target creatures with toughness x or less if x is 10 so if you manage to sink 12 mana into this um return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield so we're looking here at late game um and if we're able to we're, we're smashing this out what it can do though is for one mana it can destroy three creatures with toughness three sorry for, for three mana it can destroy three creatures with toughness one or less um and it ramps all the way up but if we do get it really late game um then potentially you're bringing all your creatures back and it can be a real winner for us. And there you go. That is the deck. Um, very, very tricky deck to build around Ephemia the Cacophony. Um, <laughs> she she is an interesting card, and her effect is something I, I didn't want to shy away from. It's dead easy to do a mono black deck that's really powerful that doesn't utilize Ephemia at all. Um, but I wanted to try and get as much zombie synergy as I could in there. Um, loads of enchantments and just utilize her to the best of her ability. Now, obviously, there are other ways of winning with the deck. There are loads of other ways of winning with, with black. Um, there are probably tons of cards I've missed, but what you've got to remember is this deck costs right now, not including lands, £9.38. If you were to go to doublesleeve.co.uk, if you're in the UK, get in there and have a look. That is the kind of cost. Now, chances are there are only a few rares in there and a mythic. Um, you might even have these cards at home. I urge you, challenge yourself. Can you build a better brawl deck for less? Um, I have got a budget brawl, um, pauper brawl deck already on the channel. I'm going to be doing as many of these budget brawl decks as possible. Um, with Ikoria come out, I will start looking at the Ikoria cards and seeing how we can get 
um, some fantastic Ikoria cards inbuilt, and I've not put any Ikoria cards into this deck because it's um, they, you know, they're not available to get yet. And the whole point of this is to give you more reasons to use your standard cards, and also to feel a bit less guilty for opening a bunch of standard cards because you know, why should you feel guilty? Um, you get a double benefit. You get brawl as well as standard. Um, but either way, guys, uh, I hope you've enjoyed. Hope you've benefited from this video. Uh, we'd really appreciate the like on the video, uh, subscribe, why not, see more of these. If you like this theme, um, if you feel like you've got a better idea than Jack around what a good brawler would be, maybe you want to challenge me and give me some really obscure legendary creature that is in the uh, the current standard, um, then brilliant. Uh, let me know. Um, and, uh, and yeah, look, I hope you've really enjoyed it. Hope you've liked this format rather than just a voiceover. Uh, it's good to talk. I know it's not particularly smooth, but it's getting there. Uh, and, um, and yeah, look, it's been great. Thank you very much, guys. Have a great one, and we'll see you in the next one.